Hi there, thank you for joining me. What we're going to look at in this video is finding the remaining sides and angles of the triangle or triangles with the following. Alpha is equal to 50 degrees, A is equal to 11, and B is equal to 12. Now notice here we have one angle and two sides. And when I have one angle and two sides, I have to be on the lookout to see whether that is a side angle side case or it's a side side angle case. Now recall the side angle side case, we would do um, an application of law of cosines. And then the side side angle case, we have to tread very carefully because there are different situations that might occur. So how do I tell? Well, if it's the side angle side case, the angle is between the two sides, so it won't be a pair of an angle and an opposite side when you have that. So for side angle side, you'd have something like side A angle gamma side B, or side B angle alpha and side C. So there's not an opposite pair in there. Here I have two sides and an angle, and I also have the angle alpha and the side A. So I have a pair where I have a side and the side is opposite the angle that I have. And I've got two sides and an angle. So when we do the diagram for this case, we want to make sure that we, the convention wise, is to just start with a horizontal. We don't know the length of the side on that part of it. And then we draw our angle that we're given. 50 degrees is an acute angle, so it's between zero and 90 degrees. So I drew in the 50 degrees. And then with the sides, you have to compare the notation. And because I have angle alpha, side A is opposite angle alpha. So A has to go opposite alpha, and then B is an adjacent side to the 50 degrees. And then here's my angle alpha. Now, if you recall in the tutorial, when we have the um, side side angle case, and my angle is acute, with the side opposite being shorter than the adjacent side, that's when I might have either zero triangles or one triangle or two triangles. And going through the solving process is where we will get the information about which case we have. So let's start by using the law of sines. We have that pair of side A and angle alpha. So we have 11 is to the sine of 50 degrees as 12 is to the sine of beta, and we will mark beta here. Um, while we're at it, we'll put in our gamma and our side C. Okay, now solving this, we'll multiply both sides by sine beta, and then also multiply both sides by sine 50 degrees, and I have 11 sine beta, is equal to 12 times the sine of 50 degrees, dividing both sides by 11, and then taking the inverse sine of both sides, we get that beta is equal to inverse sine of 12 sine 50 degrees divided by 11. And then when we look at that approximation, that gives me that beta is approximately 56.687 degrees and as a reporting value we'll report is approximately 57 degrees. So if we have that being our beta, we'll put the 57 degrees there, then I can find gamma by 180 degrees for the total measure of the um, angles of a triangle, minus the 50 degree angle we were given, minus the 56.687 degree approximation, and we get that that's about 73.313 degrees, 
which will report as 73 degrees to the nearest degree. So then that would give us a 73 degrees here. And then what we have um, to notice here is that I did have the case where I have an acute angle. My side opposite the acute angle is shorter than the side adjacent. And when I did this first part to find um, beta, I did not get an error on my calculator. So that rules out having no triangles. I didn't get 90 degrees for beta. So that rules out one triangle. I um, ended up with an acute angle for beta. So that means I'm going to have two triangles. So let's finish up getting the, the last value for this first triangle case. So then for side C, we're still going to start with 11 is to the sine of 50 degrees as, but here it's side C is to the sine of, and we're going to use the um, value for gamma that's not as rounded. So 73.313 degrees so we don't propagate error. Multiplying both sides by the sine of 73.313 degrees, we get that C is approximately equal to 11 times the sine of 73.313 degrees divided by the sine of 50 degrees and that gives me a C value of approximately 13.755. So reporting value to the nearest one, um, we have C is approximately 14. Well, now we have where we talked over that we could have another case. And the other case would be drawing our horizontal, drawing our angle alpha that's 50 degrees, having B equal 12 is our adjacent side and our opposite side, remember gamma and beta and that side of C being 14 are not fixed. So we could have had the 11 length for side A being here. Where this actually just kind of swung over and made this other triangle. Well then how do we find that? Well, when we're looking at what we would have if it were to swing over, the side 11 is the same. So that would actually make, and I'll just kind of nest it in here, it would make an isosceles triangle in here. So this angle would also be the 57 degrees, and that's the one down here. But that's not in our new triangle. However, it's on a straight line with an angle that's in our triangle, our angle beta for our new triangle. So a straight angle's measurement is 180 degrees. My new beta is 180 degrees minus that 57 degrees. And actually we should use, since we'll be using it in calculations, the 56.687 degrees. And then when we do that subtraction and get our angle, we get that that is about 123.313 degrees. And now our new gamma we're going to use the 180 degrees for the entire triangle. So I have 180 degrees minus the 50 degrees that we had on the onset, minus the 123.13, sorry, 313 degrees, 
which leaves me approximately 6.687 degrees or we report gamma as approximately 7 degrees. And now with this new value, we also will have a new measure for C and we will find that by setting up 11 is to the sine of 50 degrees. That's still given information as C is to the sine of this 6.687 degrees. Multiplying both sides by the sine of 6.687 degrees, C is approximately equal to 11 times the sine of 6.687 degrees divided by the sine of 50 degrees. So C is approximately equal to 1.672. And then rounded, we'll around that to approximately two. So that is how you use the information um, when you have the ambiguous case, an acute angle with the opposite side being shorter than the adjacent side, long enough to reach and long enough to reach past just touching. And that's why I get my two triangles.